Hi, my name's John Cowan, and welcome to this webinar hosted by Learning Links. It's a short presentation on how to connect your children to your wider family and the wider world. Now, we are social beings, and you've probably heard the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. And that's because children thrive best when they're surrounded by a community of supportive, safe adults. And it's great if you've got a collection of people around you that help you and help your child throughout their growing up. It's particularly important, apparently, as young adolescents transition into adult. In former times, it was very normal for a adolescent, a teenager, to go out and to work with same gender adults because biology gives you the body of an adult, but to become a healthy, functioning man or woman, you need to download the software from other healthy men and women. And that happened very naturally in other cultures and in previous times. But in our current age, we, we tend to put kids into big high schools where they only mix with same age peers. And then they may go off to university and it may be well into their adult life before they have friendships and working relationships with other and older adults. And so you can serve your kids really, really well throughout their childhood by having other good adults in their world. It's also good for kids to know who they are, where they fit in the world, and uh, know something of their culture, their heritage, and their connection. You probably don't need to overthink the connecting process because it usually happens very naturally. In the beginning of a child's life, the world just consists of one parent or two parents maybe orbiting around the single infant. And as they get older, they become aware of other members of the family and carers. And then as they progress through their preschool years, they might be involved in early childhood education and play groups, and then on into kindergarten, then on to school and joining in with sport and interest groups and, and culture groups. And so it just tends to happen fairly naturally for most children. But it is true that a lot of kids don't connect to a wider world. One of the problems is that we're a very mobile nation. Kiwis, on average, move house about every five years. And so it's not at all unusual for you to not even know the names of the neighbours around you, let alone people, everyone in the street. It's also very normal for people to be living a long way away from the rest of their family. Most people live more than 30 kilometres away from their own parents. And an increasingly large number of us have come from overseas to set up home in New Zealand. And we're a long way from our homes and of, of origin. And also in, in this era of COVID, that connection is, make, is even more difficult. And so we do need to consciously think, how am I get, going to get my kids to connect with my family and the wider world? One of the best things we can do as parents is to reconnect with our own family. It's fairly normal, I think, at the outset of a relationship with uh, uh, your partner to perhaps withdraw into each other and to just sort of de develop relationships with your own sets of friends and maybe become a bit more distant with your own siblings and maybe your parents and grandparents. And especially when children come on, you tend to come along, you tend to implode into parenthood. And so could I just say for the sake of your children, but also for your own sake, reconnect with your own siblings and, and family. It's a wonderful asset that you're providing your children. People sometimes measure resilience in terms of how many factors a child has on their side. And one of the best ones they have is being able to have connections with a wide supportive family. Could I just say, you may find this hard. As you transition to adulthood, uh, some of your relationships with your siblings can become very distant. I know in my own family, two of my brothers didn't talk to each other for 16 years. And when they finally did reconnect, they were best mates and they regretted all those years that they'd spent, a spent apart. So can I urge you, overcome your shyness, your reluctance, perhaps some grudges that you have, 
and reconnect with your wider family for the sake of your kids. One of the best ways that children learn anything is through stories. I believe our brains are wired for stories. And so tell children stories about your childhood, about growing up, about what it was like with your family, what your, what your siblings were like, about uncles and aunts and maybe relatives that have passed on. It's a different, distant world for them. And uh, it's something that they will treasure and be able to pass on to their own kids. And especially if you have traveled to New Zealand to become, uh, to do your parenting here, tell them about your homeland, about the things that were different, about things that you appreciated and, and valued about your family of origin. And uh, that will be a treasure in your kid's heart too. So tell stories and um, coach your own parents, your grandparents, to tell them stories as well. Print off pictures and stick them everywhere. Pictures of your siblings, of your grandparents, ancestors, places you've been, family holidays, print them off. They don't have to be particularly high resolution, just any old printer will probably do and blue tack them on the wall and all over the place and change them off and, and tell stories about them, get them to ask questions about them. Pictures are a wonderful way of making kids feel like they belong to uh, a wider family. Another thing that uh, I think is a lot of fun is sticking up maps. And I found that the lavatory is a good place to do that. Maybe change them fairly often so they don't get too grubby. But you can put up a map of the world to show maybe where your origins are, where relatives live, where, um, where friends live. Label them. And you can also put up little quizzes on the map to find cities or mountains. It's great for their geography, but it's also fantastic to give them a sense that they are part of someone why, uh, part of something that's bigger than just your little family. And this is important, especially with these uh, restrictions during our current era of COVID. That means that we're perhaps not able to travel and interact with these people. We're probably all getting very good at having family conversations on Zoom and uh, WhatsApp and various other social media channels. But could I urge you to share pictures, family photos, get a good scanner, or you can use your phone to scan, but scan pictures from your photo albums, old pictures that you might have that of your kids or maybe your family of origin, and share them online with your family and talk about them during your online chats and uh, it, get, it gets your wider family interested in your kids but also get your kids to quiz their grandparents and their uncles and aunts about what's going on in these pictures it can be a wonderful way of uh, just sharing family stories and you'll be amazed what you learn as well learn to use online chats well they're a wonderful technology, but I'm sure that many of us have had the experience of a chat starts and you don't know what to do. And all you do is you end up staring at your own picture on the screen and uh, wondering how you're coming across. But there's all sorts of wonderful things that you can do and they work best if there's a little bit of preparation as well. One of the things you can do, of course, is play games. You can play some of the uh, online games that uh, you can purchase and play. Uh, they, some of them are great fun. We did quite a few of these of our own family over lockdown. But so search up some of these games that you can play, but also it might just be things like noughts and crosses or drafts or chess even uh, that you play uh, where they can just see the pieces and, and uh, can call out moves. It can be a great fun. Another thing you can do is cook together. I've heard of families doing this where you distribute the same recipe and all of you decide to cook the same meal together and you're all doing it in your own kitchens but you're chatting backwards and forwards about what you're doing and giving tips and advice uh, over online media. So um, have questions for your kids to ask your parents and grandparents so that they can enter into the conversation as well. One of the things that I think your kids would enjoy and your own parents would love to watch is if they want to do little plays or dances. It's a wonderful way for uh, them to see what they're up to. And could I urge you to upskill your own parents and grandparents on how to use 
social media well. I did know one old lady that didn't quite get the hang of the video function on her phone, and every time someone was talking to her, she kept on lifting the phone up to her ear, and you get a lovely close-up picture of her, uh, of her ear hole. It's not hard to teach people new skills, and so train your, your grandparents and your own parents on how to use the chat functions and programs well as well. Maybe you're no longer together with your child's mother or father. Maybe that person isn't in your child's life at all. And their story is part of your kid's story. They have a right to know something about that person. And so can I urge you to be as generous as you can as you describe their father or mother. There may be very good reasons why you're no longer together. And you might have a lot of difficulty even talking politely about that person. But if your child only ever hears negative things about their other parent, that does impact their self-esteem. Even if they don't understand the genetics, they know that they are half that person. And if they only hear that person described as an idiot or as a monster, then they'll work out that, hey, I'm half idiot or half a monster. And so be as kind and as generous as you can as you're telling the story of their other parent. Introduce your children to your world. Your kids may have no idea who you are outside of the home. They may know nothing about your work life, your profession, your past. And so can I urge you, as you're able to, to introduce them to your work. Let them know what you do. Let them know the significance of it. Let them to know where they fit into the community. Similarly, we belong to clubs and culture groups and churches and the wider world. Introduce your kid into those circles as well. And in particular, let them meet your friends. A great idea is to host parties at your place, good parties, and to get your kids involved in serving your friends and mixing with them and drawing them into conversations. It's a fantastic asset when kids get to socialize with other adults. I know this isn't appropriate in some contexts, but I think there's a lot to be gained by taking your children to funerals, tangi, and other family events. If uh, they're old enough to uh, not distract or, for, or detract from what's going on, I think they'll get a lot from getting to meet the wider family and also understanding a little bit more about life. This is a tip that I've had repeated to me numerous times over the years that one of the best things some families do is make a habit of going on holidays with other families, families they like and trust and get along with, because there are so many advantages. For a start, your kids get to play with their kids. That's a lot of fun. But more than that, your kids get to interact with your mates. And there is such a benefit in children interacting with adults in that way. Camping adds an extra dimension to it, just a sense of adventure and difference. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's a great way of creating life stories that, and memories that they'll treasure for a lifetime. It's very typical for people to drop out of a lot of clubs and activities once they become parents. But as your children get a bit older, I think there's immense value in rejoining those things. For a start, you benefit. You become more healthy and interesting and lively, and it gives you more resilience when you're involved in your hobbies and in your clubs and in your sports. And uh, so that's, that's enough of a benefit. But there's also a good benefit for your kids as they get plugged into this wider community outside of a school community and outside of your home. And parents sometimes think, oh, I don't have that much time. I don't have that much money. It would be depriving my kids if I went off and gym group or dancing squad or whatever it was you're doing. But I don't think it dep deprives children at all. I think it adds richness. So become a joiner. Be brave and get back into life again. Thanks so much for watching. This hasn't been the last word on this topic by any means, but uh, it's just a smattering of ideas that maybe you'll find helpful. If you've got any questions or queries, please feel free to contact me. Cheers.